Hello everyone, welcome to Conference Room A at the Grafton Municipal Center. I'm Bob DeToma from Grafton Community Television. And this is my second interview with candidates running for open seats on the select board. And my guest in this segment is Colleen Roy. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to have you. Thank you for coming in. Um, you being kind of the newest member in the group to run for office, uh, I thought I'd give you an opportunity to introduce yourself to the folks at home and uh, tell us a bit about yourself and uh, maybe some of the committees that you serve on before we get into further details. So the first committee I joined was the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, or CIPC as a lot of people call it. I joined that because I looked online and it said it had an opening and I thought, what better way to get familiar with Graft and then to see what all the departments are requesting for capital needs and kind of meet people that way. Um, I attended my first select board meeting the night I was appointed to that committee and I have attended every single select board meeting since in person because I, I was just hooked. Um, I realized attending the meetings in person, you really got to see a lot of that interpersonal play that sometimes gets lost watching it at home. And I started attending as many meetings as I could for other boards and committees as well because I really tried to immerse myself in learning about Grafton. And then I ended up getting on the finance committee. I've been on that since um, last summer. And I recently got on the Grafton Sustainability Committee as a non-voting member. So just working my way through all the boards and committees at this point. Okay. There's, I guess there's a lot of people in town that believe if you're going to run for select board, you should have been a either a former planning board member or a former FinCom member. So I look like current FinCom member. Right. So you've I got, got that one checked. You've got that one checked off, <laughs> correct. Yeah. So um, when did you make the decision to run for select board? Was it a long thought process or did it just kind of hit you one day? I first considered it when Mr. Spinney got off the board. I knew I always wanted to be a select board member, but like you said, I really wanted to do my time, get in familiar with Grafton, and let people figure out who I was and just spend some time on the finance committee. But when Mr. Spinney stepped down and it was just a six month seat, I thought, oh, that's a really great opportunity to just run and, and see if I was a good fit for the select board. Um, I ultimately pulled out of that race when more candidates joined because I didn't want to run and and potentially mess up that election just as to gain experience. I didn't want to do that. Um, but I got my name out there a little bit more and I was pretty convinced I wasn't going to run this spring at the time. But I've been paying attention to what's going on in the board and I wasn't really thrilled with what I was seeing. And I wasn't seeing a lot of people stepping up and pulling papers. So I pulled my papers pretty late in comparison to um, some people. And I got my papers in, and here I am running for select board. So would you say your interest in politics is newer rather than older? No. Um, I've been paying attention to local politics almost my whole life. I grew up in Hopkinton, and my family is pretty involved in politics there. Um, Specifically, I've always paid attention to the lighter side of politics. My family and I run the Horribles Parade, and part of that is poking fun at local politics. So in order to do that successfully, you must pay attention. <laughs> so I've only been paying attention to Grafton specifically for a few years, but I've always had a, an interest in local politics. Okay. Where do you stand on some of the topics in town that everybody seems to be talking about? Uh, marijuana facilities, um, super park, uh, economic development. Why don't, we, why don't we touch on some of those topics and express Well, let's start with the them. super park, seeing how I have a citizen's petition on the warrant concerning the super park. Um, as far as I feel about the super park, I have two small children. The idea of a, another playground, especially this wonderful playground that they're talking about, who wouldn't, right? But I put this citizen's petition on because in 2015, town meeting was shown a completely different project. They were shown around a half a million dollar playground. They were told they had $100,000 of CPC funds already to fund it. 
if town meeting gave them 290, they'd be almost there and the rest would come from private fundraising. And town meeting said, sure. You know, they were shown images, they were shown plans, they were shown phases and pricing and it all made sense in 2015. Um, unfortunately, what they were shown was not able to come to fruition. The, the pricing was too low. They weren't able to really get what they wanted. They couldn't make it through planning board and this project went stagnant for a while. CPC funds were sunset and that 290,000 just kind of sat in an account for a while. They did some plans and they recently just did more plans in January. So now it's down to 241,000, but it's a completely different project at this point. It's, it's ballooned in scope, it's ballooned in price. And I really wanted to let the residents have an opportunity to say, do we still want to back this new project? And if they do great, but if they don't, because they're aware of our new financial situation, they're aware of our capital backlog, they'll have an opportunity to say, maybe not. Um, Super Park could still happen. CPC seems to be funding a majority of that with their other um, articles. So I don't think my petition would absolutely stop Super Park, but it allows residents to decide, do they still want that money to go to this new project? So your concern is making sure that the voters have the opportunity to weigh in. Right. The project changed. Do you still want this money to go there? And uh, just give people an opportunity to say how they feel. Okay. Marijuana facilities? Marijuana facilities. I do support the idea of increasing it from 20% to 50%. And I think because we are in such dire straits for revenue source, I don't think we should be cutting off opportunities when they're arising. We don't have a lot of economic development in the near future. This is the development that's decided it's wanting to set up in Grafton, and I do believe that it would be helpful for us to have them. Do you have an opinion on why it's hard to attract business to Grafton? <sighs> or is that even a far-fetched idea I just made up? <laughs> no, I don't think it's far-fetched. I think some of it has to do with... Um, Logistics, you know, again, I grew up in Hopkinton, so 495 ran right through us. We were right by the Mass Pike, and it was just, logistically, it worked well there. Um, and then I think watching the school systems has a big role in it, too. When I grew up, Hopkinton wasn't the school system it is today. It's very desirable, and it and because of that, it, it draws in a lot of that commercial development that we talk about. Hmm. And right now, our school system does a great job, but it's funded at one of the lowest in the state. And, and if we want to draw in that business that we say we do, we really just need to decide what our priorities are. Are our priorities to be the safest town in the, in, in the state and, and we just beef up our public safety and have zero crime? Is our goal to have the best school in the state and do what we possibly can to, to drive that message home? I don't know. Um, but I do think we need to, to pick some priorities and, and really stand behind them. The Mass Pike runs through a, a chunk of Grafton. It does, but it's a little, I don't know. I, I, There's a hidden I component can't... somewhere. What? There's a hidden component somewhere. Yeah, I don't, and I don't know what it is. It, it, trust me, if I knew the answer, I would tell everyone in Grafton so we could start working on the solution. But I unfortunately do not have the answer. Uh, what do you consider your qualifications to be a member of the select board? I have a lot of passion and I've spent a lot of time um, immersing myself in everything Grafton. I really, I mean, th these piles of paper right here, these are just all, all budget documents. I, I would be embarrassed to show you my bedroom. It's just all Grafton all the time. And I really do feel like I have the qualifications to help move the conversations forward, ask the questions that might not be asked at every meeting, and, and really do my part to help us get to the right solutions for Grafton. When you are out and about talking to people, would you say that you get more input from supporters, or do you get an equal amount from, also, I don't want to say opponents, that's not the right word, but people that might not be inclined to vote for you? Right. Do you, do you I hear, have you hear two actually, sides of the story, I guess, is the question. Yeah. I would say I've heard more from um, supporters. I haven't really had a lot of people give me too much opposition, which is a little unfortunate because I really do want to hear all sides and all thought processes and all perspectives for issues because that really can help 
shift and change my thought process. Um, but I, I feel like I've been pretty lucky and I've, I've gotten a lot of support. So it's fair to say that if you, if, if someone's supporting you, you have a pretty good idea what it is that they think and believe. What do you think somebody that might not be inclined to vote for you, what do you, what do you think would be their concerns? That I'm an unknown, that they don't know where I came from or, or who I might have an allegiance with or, or what my agenda is. And, and for me, that's pretty easy. I, I, I don't really have an allegiance and I don't have an agenda. I, I, it's true passion and, and caring for the town is why I want to do this. Um, you know, I didn't grow up here. I don't, I don't have, I don't have that name, but I, I can tell you, I, I really do care about Grafton and I want to see it do well. Okay. Um, have you learned any life lessons being quarantined? Or have you been out and about and working? <laughs> yeah, we don't pay our teachers enough. I would like to send my children back. He's only in kindergarten. <laughs> but it's a lot of work homeschooling. And I, yeah, whatever they want. Teachers list next year, you beef that up. I'm going to get you whatever you need. <laughs> I asked this question of uh, Jennifer Thomas. Do you have your mask handy? Do I have a mask handy? Yeah. I, I leave it in the car because that's the only time I would need it. Okay. Oh, but I can get it. Oh, no, it's okay. It's not a test. It's not like it's a pass-fail thing. I failed. Oh, no. um, but you can go on my Facebook page. I just did a family photo with our masks. Okay. So. Well, I'll, just, I'll just wave mine. There. Yeah. Because we have to start wearing them here at the Municipal Center to make sure that uh, we're, we're in compliance. Not that there's a lot of people here, but, but soon people will start right. coming back into the building. So if we take um, school budget, town budget, super park, marijuana facilities off the table, what other things might you be interested in pursuing? What other priorities would you like to focus on? I, oh, well, the budget? Hmm, that was my big one. I really want to see us talking about the budget all, all year long. I want to see departments come in all year long. I want to be talking about capital all year long. I don't think we need to wait until a specific timetable to say these are when we can have these conversations. I understand numbers come in all year long and, and when certain things get certified or when we find out cherry sheets, I do understand that, but I don't think that that long-term planning conversation has to stop. I think it can be happening all year long and I think it would help us avoid some of the, the pitfalls we find if we were just constantly talking about it. Do you think that um, if the select board were to meet in conference room A starting next week and we abandoned the, uh, the Zoom universe, do you think that people that have been deeply immersed in politics would come into this room and take part or would it just go back to the old way? Well, I'm probably the only person that would say I think it would stay the same, but that's because I attend them all in person. It hasn't been my experience that the rooms stay very crowded. Hot button issues for sure. They're, they're, it'll pack a house, but on a typical Tuesday night where they're just talking about nothing specific, it's, it's usually just me sitting in there. Um, so that's a historically I would say probably not but I don't know a lot more people have tuned in a lot more people are paying attention and and it is really easy to go down and everybody's been staying at home a lot maybe maybe they will show up and your kids are uh, on the younger side of the spectrum right there yes three and six okay so it's, it's perfect for me they go to bed and I go to meetings <laughs> so that I can't ask the question do they have any strong opinions about you running for office no <laughs> Okay, um, if you would like, I'll uh, turn uh, the microphone over to you, so to speak, and let you um, either reintroduce yourself again or make an appeal to the voters of Grafton and uh, tell people where you stand and what you want to do for Grafton in the future. I, I really just want to help Grafton. Grafton has a long road ahead of it, especially with the impact of COVID. We're really going to need to start having hard conversations. We're really going to need to put in the effort to, to understand what those problems are and, and not get caught up in semantics and, and not get caught up in the interpersonal relationships that seems to be what's holding the board back now. And I really want to be that voice. I really want to ask those questions. And I really want your vote on June 23rd. 
My guest today has been Colleen Roy. She's a candidate for a seat on the Grafton Select Board. Thank you for taking part today. Thank you. On behalf of everyone here at Grafton Community Television, thank you for watching.